there we go. The recorder is running. Today's date is uh, Tuesday, April 9, 2024, and I want to welcome everybody. Uh, for those that don't know, my name is Rick. I uh, operate, manage, and run the Hit Run Candlestick um, Trading Room. And uh, man, thank you all for being here. I truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, somebody just PM me as the recorder running. Yep, yep, it's running. So um, tonight, I want to talk a little bit about trading a small account. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six slides that I'd like to look at. And then we're going to look at the market and just, you know, talk about charts and the overall market. I hope that's okay with everybody. Um, so let me, let me uh, see if I can click a button here and get this PowerPoint. Oh, oh hey, would you look at that? Um, I'm always amazed when I can get a PowerPoint out there. So, um, I, like I said, we're, we're going to, here, we can get past this. We don't need that. We're, we're going to talk about um, um, uh, trading small accounts. And uh, anybody that would like to share, if they have a small account, please do so. So somebody's not feeling all alone out there. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to say a small account is anything under $25,000 because that, that puts you in that, that day trading rule. So, um, for me, a, a small account, the way I would look at it, and it's because I've got one and I'm about to open up another one around that $5,000 mark. So I don't want anyone to feel left out or anything. So might want to. I say if anybody wants to put, not how much, just yes, small account or no. Anyway, I do want to run this little disclaimer by you. Investing and trading uh, involves uh, financial risk and is not suitable for everyone. This is very, very important, okay? This is, this is very important. And I hate to, you know, I hate to say this to some people, but trading is just not for some people. It's the way it is. Um, I'm a truck guy, all right? Not everybody likes trucks. A lot of people want sporty cars. You know, I, I'm a truck guy. So, hey, it, it works. It works. And and if, if trading is not for you, then trading is not for you. Uh, you're probably better off to fess up to it and step away from trading um, or you're likely to lose money. Okay, so um, it... it, it Anyway, I, I just be careful with trading. Uh, hey, Vern. Yes, the recorder is running. Yes, yes, yes. So um, I, I want to run this right away uh, here for everybody. Um, tomorrow sometime, I, I apologize for not getting it done tonight. Uh, I just ran out of time, honestly. Um, but I will put together a list of stocks that um, are priced for small accounts. And what I mean by that is small accounts, look, you, you can't, you can't trade. Well, I, I shouldn't say the word can't, can't seem so absolute. Um, in my personal opinion, I know I can't. Okay. Hey, 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 let's do that with my account, small account. I cannot trade $150 stocks with a small account. You can't do it. I can't do it. Um, so I will, I will, I, I've got a list, but I'll get it updated. And uh, I will send this out to everybody. And I can do this because you're on our database. So um, if you're here, you're on our database. I'll make sure this gets out to you. Okay. And, and, uh, but it'll be a list of stocks that are priced for smaller accounts. Um, all members and doggone it, I apologize. I should have this up and running already. All members should have this. And if you don't, if you don't, I've already talked with Ed and Ed is going to make sure that you have this tomorrow. But um, this is a list of everything that all members should have with hit and run candlesticks. Okay. And it's, it's the rounded bottom breakout strategy, you know, leveraging some Fibonacci uh, pinball setup. I'm not going to read all this bullish and bearish setups. 
Um, it's all right here, okay? There's about eleven thousand dollars worth of worth of product. It's all for sale on the website at this, and but all members should have this. If you don't have it and you are a member, don't worry. Please don't don't send us emails, okay? I I just got off the phone with Ed just a little while ago, and I okayed it with him, and we worked out some details, and he's going to send that out uh, tomorrow. I can't say it's going to be in the AM or PM, but um, um, every member, and if you already have it, if you already have everything, then just trash the email, okay? Uh, I don't want to clog your your um, your email up, but that's the best way to getting it out there, okay? Um, the next thing is our membership starts at $24.50, so anybody that, that takes a membership, you will receive all that stuff right there okay so at twenty four dollars and fifty cents i think it's pretty good and uh you you get to keep everything it's not like we want anything back so um keep that in mind all right now let's go to work here just a little bit okay trading a small account iris says looking forward to grow to grow a small account yeah are we, yes we're recording let's see um i have a small account thank you nicole thank you um some of you, and I'm going to trade, I'm going to sh be sharing one account with you here. Um, uh, we're going to look at some things in it, but um, and anyway, let me just kind of get going here. Hey, Kev. So <clears throat> let me get a drink here. Sorry, I'm raspy throat. Long day. Hey, Frank, how you doing? How are you and the missus doing? Okay, I hope. Um, so, trading with a small account, it's not hard. All right, it really is not hard. The it, It's not hard, but you know what? It does require patience and dedication. Now, if you are somebody that you don't have patience, trading is not for you. Uh, I'm Look, that's not much of a sales pitch, is it? But if you don't, if you do not have patience, trading is not for you. If you are not willing to dedicate a little time to trading, probably not going to work out for you either. And the dedication is all about learning about charts, okay, for the most part. Because every what we're going to talk about a little bit here is pretty much black and white. It's kind of... It's kind of, it is the way it is, you know? And if you don't follow that rule, well, it sucks to be you. Not gonna lie to you. Not gonna lie to you. Um, but patience. If you don't have patience, it's never gonna work. Never. And there'll be a couple instances through these few slides uh, as we look at charts where I might bring up where you need some patience, okay? Um, the the pattern day trading rule this is a problem all right i'm not gonna lie to you this is a problem okay but i'm gonna show you how to get around it a little bit okay you you can't you can't get around the whole day trading rule but you can you can soften it a little bit you can soften it a little bit and i'm gonna show you how to do that Basically, the, the day trading rule is three day trades within, a fi within five business days. If you do this, what they'll do is they will close your account. Now, they're not going to keep your money. They're going to give you your money. But they will, they will shut you down from trading. And if you call them up and it's your first time, and if you, and if you get down on one knee and you beg forgiveness, they will turn your account back on. Okay? But if you do it again they might not turn your account back on. They might not. Um, again, they're not going to keep your money. They're going to give you your money, but you just can't trade. So here's a trick that I use. I buy, whoops, end of day. Now, before anybody types anything, let me explain. The first thing someone's probably trying to type right now, just hold on is, well, I don't want to hold anything overnight. Well, 
that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of in my life. Why not? Well, here's what people will say. Say you're long and you, you're, you're long. Uh, let's do this. You're long something. It's been working. Um, you buy it. Okay. You buy it right here, maybe. And I don't want to hold it overnight because I'm afraid that will happen. Did you know that in a trader's career, you could, you could cut probably two or three fingers off your hand and in 30 years of trading, that might happen to you twice, maybe. So the whole idea of, well, I, I don't want to hold it overnight is, is ridiculous in my opinion. Okay. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, if you pick crappy stocks, if you trade at the, at the most worst time, you know what? You might see, maybe not that much, you might, you might see something like that. Absolutely. But this is where the dedication comes in. You're going to have to learn how to trade. And learning how to trade doesn't require hours and hours and hours all day long at the computer. It doesn't require that. It does require a little bit of time. How much time? I don't know. You know, Frank there, for instance, I happen to know that Frank plays guitar. Okay, I happen to know that. I also know that Frank is an avid dancer, Frank and his and his bride. Avid dancers. I mean, they 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 can cut a rug. So my question to Frank, which don't, you don't have to answer unless you, you know, want to Frank, but how long did it learn? How long did it take you to learn how to play the guitar, which I know you're still learning, but you know, to where you got comfortable. The point I'm trying to make folks is it's like driving a car. What, what, what did you do? Did you turn 16 and all of a sudden you knew how to drive a car? Well, truthfully, there's probably some guys out there that's shaking their head. Yeah, I knew, you know, I'm probably one of them. And that didn't go over too easy. All right. So the point is you have to learn how to trade. You have to learn how to dance. Okay. It's not like you just, you know, the first time you got up on the dance floor, you, you wiggle like an idiot. You go home, you stand in front of the mirror, you put some good tunes on, you practice, the next time you go dancing, you're not wiggling like an idiot. You're wiggling like a cutie pie or something like that. It takes dedication. So if you are willing to do that, then trading is pretty darn easy. Okay. Trader Rex is, is saying much easier to hold overnight if you buy a stock that is setting up in an uptrend. Sure. Yeah. You want everything right. And we'll certainly talk about that tonight too. Okay. So. So this whole, I, I hear people say this all the time. I don't want to hold um, overnight. Well, that's ridiculous, okay? Now, here's why. Here's why. Is because during the day, if I buy a stock, and I'm not saying that I don't buy in the morning or early in the day, but please keep in mind, I've got 36 years of trading under my belt. And, but for somebody that's just learning how to trade, this is just a trick I use. And I just want to share with you why I will do this sometimes. During the day, sometimes you see a candle that looks like this. You buy it. By the end of the day, it looks like this. How does that make you feel? Well, let me tell you something. It doesn't make you feel very good. All right. It doesn't. I don't care how long you've been trading. That candle does not make you feel very good if you bought it up here, say at 10 o'clock in the morning. So the thing to do is wait to the last hour of the day. As you look at your charts, you know, you might, you might, uh, here, let's do this. Uh, you'll see a chart that might, that this would be a perfect setup for me. Boom, 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 boom. And now, there you go here. All right. At the end of the day, this becomes a buy. So what happens is you're not getting punished early in the day 
um, from the chart. But let's keep this on why I do this. Because if I buy it early in the day, I have a tendency to fret and worry about it. If I buy it at the end of the day, I'm buying a good solid candle. You know what else? If it goes overnight and let's say for whatever reason, or let's go to the, let's go to the positive side first. Let's say the next day it does this. I can close it or take money off the table. And I don't get hit with that stupid uh, pattern day trading rule because I held it overnight. Trick. Okay. So now what if things go wrong? Or maybe just for some reason I choose to close it. So I'm going to do this. Not horribly wrong. I'm okay with an inside day. I'm all right. Um, let's see here. You know, we have a stop in there. Everything's working. Everything's looking good. But just maybe there's some news that comes out. Maybe there's some news that comes out. Something that I don't like. Something I don't like. But my position is still okay for the most part. I can close it. What if it comes down here? Whoops, let's just paint that red. There we go. What if it does come down and hit my stop? I can close it and I don't get hit with that stupid pattern day trading rule. Just by buying at the end of the day. Now, I want to say this again. For those of you that are afraid to hold overnight, please, I've been trading for 36 years and I know some old timers here have been trading a long time and you think about it. You can whack off two to three fingers of your hand and that's how many times in your trading career you've seen something really nasty happen. It's not like it happens all the time. Another thing is think about your positions. When you're in a position, say you have $5,000, okay, in your account, you, you don't... <laughs> I don't ever want you to have $5,000 invested. So you don't have $5,000 invested. How much do you have invested? Let's just say for the sake of argument, you've got $500 invested. So if something did happen on that position, you may have multiple positions, say at, at 500 and $500 invested. And maybe that one position... Sure. Okay. Maybe something happened to it. You're still alive to trade another day. Okay. You're still alive to trade another day. So, it, you know, the, the whole concept of I don't hold overnight because I'm afraid of what might happen. The truth of it is the reason that's happening is right here. Patience and dedication. You have not, you do not have the patience and you have not had the dedication to trading. Now, I apologize if I'm, somebody might feel that I'm picking on you without even, without even um, picking your name out. I'm sorry. But trading is something that is, 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 it, 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 it can be life changing, not always for the better. So I'm doing what I can to put things out there so it is for the better. And I, I tell no lies here. I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm brutally, and some people know this, brutally honest about this right here. You have got to have some dedication and learn how to trade first. And it doesn't take very long. In fact, in fact, I'll bet you one hour with you one hour with somebody looking at charts, I can show you charts that are worthy of a trade. I can show you where the stop should be or where I might think the stop should be. The problem is you never do it. That's the problem. Dedication to yourself, dedication to trading. All right. Every time it works out this way. 
Um, let's see here. Um, JC is saying stay away from biotechs. Yeah, I'm not a big biotech fan either. They can go against you. You are correct, JC. Uh, the PD rule uh, only pertains to margin account. You are right, Rich Richie. You are correct. Which brings me to cash or margin. Now, this is another one of these little things that I, I, I wonder, when, when I hear people say, I never want a margin account, I only want a cash account, what are you really saying? Well, you know what I hear when, when you say that, when somebody says that? And believe me, I have people say that. You know what I hear? You don't have the dedication. You don't have the patience. You have not learned how to trade yet. You have no confidence in yourself. You have no confidence in yourself. That's what I hear. And if, if you, you can come up with all sorts of reasons, well, I'm doing it for safety. What's safety? If you're investing $500, you're investing $500. Doesn't matter if it's cash or margin. But I have to tell you, if you have $5,000 in your account and you can parlay that into 10K, let me tell you, trading's easier. So the whole business of, well, I never want a margin account makes no sense to me. Makes zero sense to me. Not if you're trying to grow your account and you're serious about it and you're dedicated to the end result. Okay? It makes no sense to me. Here's another one that I love to hear. And, and this is also a tax thing too, uh, sort of. Um, I, I don't know what percentage it is. I don't know. I don't want a margin account because they charge me. I don't know. I'm, I, I don't, I should know what this number is, but I don't. They charge me 1%. I, again, maybe somebody can share what, what that number is. I don't know. Let me, let me, let, let me get this right. Let me get this right. You set out a goal to take $5,000 and we're going to say double it in 12 months, 5K times 2, 12 months, okay? Turn it into $10,000, and you're going to piss and moan about 1%? Seriously? Tax time comes around. You have to pay taxes because you've made money trading? Seriously? If I make $100,000 trading, I don't want to pay taxes. I will throw a fit, but there are worse things to happen to you, believe me. So, look, you know, the people doing the margin for you, they've got to make money too. What's wrong with that? Okay, so... Um, you know, find all the reasons you want to not help your account, but the truth of it is, none of those reasons hold water. Not a single one of them. All right? And these are just some, some things that I've discovered over time, is that what to worry about, what not to worry about, um what's real and what's not real what is what is is nonsense that you get via emails you read other places well, you know you have to sift through what's true and what's not true and all and also what's true to you look i'm i'm not you know maybe, maybe somebody really is uh you know freaking out about you know one percent whatever they charge you okay I mean, if that really freaks you out, okay, that's fine. But is that really going to take you to that dedication that you need to trade? I, I just, just be truthful with yourself, okay? That's all. Just be truthful. All right, how much to spend on a position? Now, that's an interesting one right there. How much to spend on a position? 
Number one, um, if you are a good trader, if you have proven that you're a trader, um, a successful trader, successful trader to me means somebody that can string some winning trades together. I don't care how much you make. That's got nothing to do with it. String some winning trades together. All right. So, so your account might look like this. All right. Uh, closed positions. Everybody's going to have a loss. Here, let's have two of them. That's what I would call a pretty good account right there. Closed positions. You look at them, you've got closed positions and, you know, a winning trade, winning trade, winning trade, couple losers, winning trade, winning trade. Overall, you've made money. <coughs> Excuse me. Overall, you've made money. So in that case, how much money can you put in a, a, a position? More money than somebody that their account looks like this. Whoops. That was kind of big, wasn't it? Kind of hard to control my mouse when I get going here. If you've had nothing but losing positions, you don't want to spend money, a lot of money on your account. Okay, you don't want to do that. So there is no magic number. I, I you know, I, I to, to be, to be on the safe side, you know, to be on the legal side, things like that, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to say the industry standard is 2%. Okay? That's me being safe right here online right now. Okay? Um, when I, I've got one small account, I'm about to have another one come on board. And I can tell you that on those small accounts, $5,000. I will spend close to a thousand dollars per position. Now I say close to because when I trade, I'm going to be trading options, and you can't get exact. So some some trade might be eleven hundred, some might be nine hundred. Okay, something like that. So close in there. But I've got a record. John there may not have a record. John, this could be you, which I'm just picking on you because you're the last one that typed anything, okay? So how much do you spend on a position? How about we figure out if you're a trader yet or not? Patience. Let's figure out if we're a trader first. Finding charts to trade, piece of cake. I can teach you that in an hour. I can teach you that tonight. Tonight, I can teach you that, and I will. Where to enter, I can help you with that. Exit for profits, I can help you with that. Stop loss, I can help you with that. Piece of cake. It's not hard. But you know what's going to happen? Is patience will kill us, or lack of patience. Lack of patience is our enemy, is our absolute enemy. Um, I don't even know how many slides. Oh, so um, I think this is the last slide. Yeah. So as an example, and what I did is I took 5%. If you have a $5,000 account, you're, you know, all you can spend is $250. That's it. That's not very much, is it? You're not going to make it hardly any money. And finding charts to trade is going to be difficult. But if you spend 10%, that gives you a little bit more money. And I, I want to also, here's a question. I thought I had it on there, but I guess I didn't. I didn't see it. Maybe I already answered it. I've been asked by a lot of people um, if, if I can trade for a living with $5,000. No, you cannot. So just don't ask that. Don't ever ask that. No, you cannot. And... Um, I've, I've had people, hey, I'm, I want to quit my job and I have $5,000 and trade for a living. I beg them not to. Uh, please, no, no, don't do that. No, it's not going to happen. No, 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 no. Not going to happen. Okay. So anyway, I, I just, that was something I remembered. I can't remember if I talked about that or not. 
as you become a better trader, you can put more money in the position size. I have no problem putting 10 or even 15 or even 20% into a position. But I am also quick, one, to take profits as it moves up or take some profits off the table and put that money back in to the account and get it off, get it out of the risk side. Any position on is risk. So I take it off, get it out of risk. Plus, I put that, that profit in my pocket and that helps with growing the account, okay? So uh, just something to think about here. Um, you know, at, at, if you've got $10,000, $500 into position or $1,000 into the position, which is it? Well, it really, it really has nothing to do with these numbers aren't magical. What it has to do with, are you a trader? Are you? And just because you have an account doesn't mean you're a trader. Right? You've got to have that patience. You've got to have that dedication to learn how to trade. All right. So let me give you an example today. Um, today, there were a lot of charts that were setting up a lot of charts and I chose not to do anything. Okay. Um, although one trade did fill for members out there that I I, I totally uh, spaced it out to type it in there. Uh, DKNG, I went with Joe into this put for members uh, out there. Uh, I forgot to post it up there and I really didn't recognize that it filled. But anyway, here we are. So <clears throat> other than that, I, I didn't do too much. And the reason is the market is not set up for me. The market is not good for me. And this is what every trader has to learn. And once you learn this, you can back away. Let's talk about shorting for a second. I, man, I'm, did I, I must have left a slide out or something. I swear I... Huh. Oh, well. Oh. Here. Can I make tra living with $5,000? No, you cannot. I don't understand shorting. I did. I must have skipped right over this. I don't understand shorting. Here's a news flash for everybody. What makes you think you have to know how to short? What in the world makes you think that you have to short? Whoa. Think about that question right there. Or for those that's, that's shorting in options, why do you have to buy puts? What in the world makes you think you have to do that? Here's another news flash for you. Shorting is not as simple as long trading. Another news flash for you. Wealth is built on longs, not shorts. Okay? That's another great big news flash for a lot of people. I know more people that lose money because they try to short because the market might be looking short or they're hearing all these people, they're, they're, I'm doing this short, I'm doing that short, I'm buying puts here, I'm buying puts there. And you get your clock cleaned. You know why? Because shorting is, not, is not, shorting is much harder than going long. Now I know there's some people out here that are dynamo shorters, but you are two and millions are the rest. Okay? So shorting is tricky. So for smaller accounts, why do you even want to mess with it? Why? There's no point in it. There's no need for it. Remember patience? Patience. Let's have patience. Today, I exerted patience because the market stinks right now. Oh, but if the market stinks, why not go short? Because the market is not really short right now. That's why. But this is what people see. You know, they read a candlestick book and they see a bearish engulf. People, people read a paper or something about bear flags and they say, oh, a bear flag. It's not that simple. It is just not that simple. Okay, so what I'm trying to say here is choose your market. I can help you with that and completely help with that. But what I can't help with is you losing your patience and saying, 
hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to short this or I'm going to go long this when the timing is wrong. Because there's, there's a very fine line. There, there really is. There's a very fine line between trading and gambling. And we all know the most sensible people in the world have gone to Vegas and they get stupid. Come on, we all know somebody and we all might be one of those. Even though we go to Vegas and we say, I've put this much money in my pocket and that's all I'm going to spend. And even if you live to that, even if you absolutely only spend that much, you can't tell me that you didn't, you didn't get some stupid brains in the casino. So you've got to be smart about it. And don't get hooked on the addiction of trading. Very fine line there. Okay. Um, how long will it take me to show a profit? I get asked that question. You know, I don't know. <laughs> there's no P there's no PDT in, in Vegas. That's funny, Rickster. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So how long will it take me to show profit? I don't know. Nobody can tell you that. How dedicated are you going to be? You know, are you going to, are you going to spend $24 and 50 cents for your first month membership? And, um, are you going to go out there and place a trade tomorrow? You're the person that's not going to make it in trading. But if you spend that month learning and asking questions in the trading room, you have a leg up, okay? You have a leg up. And, and it's, that's smart trading, okay? Um, can, you double, can you double my account with trading stock only? It is my personal opinion you cannot. We talk about doubling your account a lot. I just recently doubled an account. Um, I've done it a couple of times. Um, I'm about to open another account. And anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that later. But um, I, I personally do not believe you can double your account uh, with stock. I personally don't believe that. Um, I don't know. Maybe somebody has or something. I don't believe it. I don't believe it possible. But with options, I absolutely believe it possible. Uh, I've proved it and I've done it. So anyway, all right. I have a couple questions here I need to get to. Uh, let's see here. Vern, because stock and options fall faster than they rise, uh, if positioned properly, uh, they're quicker to profit or quicker to losses. Um, the, the problem, Vern, is you've been trading for 100 years um, or you're answering something for John. Yeah, uh, John, there's, there's uh, so much hype about shorting. Why do you suppose that is? I don't know what hype you speak of. Um, but then Vern answered it, okay? Vern answered it. Because a lot of money can be made very, very fast. Now, don't, don't confuse that, okay? Because the chances of you being in, let's just, this is the spy, but it's just a chart, okay? The chances of you being in that are slim to none. Okay, slim to none, but there's always going to be somebody that says they, they hooked on to uh, some puts up here or shorted it. And, and I'm sure they did. Okay, that would have been a, I, I, I believe they did. And you know what? They made a ton of money, but there's millions of people out there that did not. And there's two that did. So there's a lot of hype because it's easy to talk about it. Because you do make money faster, yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> the problem is catching the trade, and there's where the problem lies for new traders. Uh, that's one of the problems, okay? And then another problem is the market is always, always trying to go higher, always. The bear always stinks. Have you ever smelled a bear in real life? Have you? They stink. 
They are not, they are not, they do not smell good. They do not smell. I'm, I'm not saying a, a longhorn smells good, but I'll tell you what, I'll take a longhorn over a bear any day. And, and, uh, you know, I'm not trying to share with people that I don't short. I do. I'm not, I'm, I'm in a short now. Um, I, I'm not trying to share with people that I'm afraid of shorting. I'm not, but please tell me who smells good here and who stinks here. So why in the world do you need to short small accounts? You don't need to. Okay. You don't. Okay. Let me, let me get through this trader X agree. Let's see. Finally set up, uh, find a setup and trade it. That's right. Um, Carrie, how do you decide your strike price and expiration date for trades? I'm glad you asked me that. Do you have a stock in mind? Otherwise, we'll just pick one. I'm just going to pick Apple, okay? So, I'm going to do this two times. And you know how I said that I can teach you in an hour's time, I can teach you, for the most part, everything you need to see in a chart. The problem is you won't do it. You will, you will, your patience will dwindle and your dedication will dwindle. That's, that's the problem with new traders. You know, they say, um, and I'm, I'm going to go with what I've heard. I've never substantiated it. I don't know. Um, I've, I've heard that, you know, over 90% of traders fail. All right. I believe that. And do you know that out of that 90%, 90% will blame the market makers, they'll blame the government, they'll blame the stock market is rigged. What a load of baloney. Stop blaming everybody else and, and, and be a man, all right? Or a woman, what, what, you know what I mean, right? You know, grow a pair. Fess up to what you, what you, what you, what's really going on is you opened up a trading account yesterday. You're trying to trade today and you have lost money and now you're going to blame everybody. So fess up to it. All these 90 people, all these, this 90%, what's the real reason they failed? Is it the government? Oh, come on, knock it off. You know, is the market rigged? No, it is not rigged. Is Wall Street out to get you? Hey, they're out to make money. They're not out to get you. You're out to make money too. You're not out to get anybody. The 90% failure rate is because people don't have patience and you don't stick with the rules. You don't have a plan. Who set it up here? CJ, JC. Find a setup and just trade it. That's all. Take profits. It's not tough. It really is not. All right, let's talk. Let me get this question answered for Carrie here. I'm going to do this two times. And I'm going to show you two times because that's what it usually will take. And this is one of those lessons that would fit within the hour and of course, if I didn't, I wouldn't be doing all this talking. I would just get to it. And th this would be part of this hour. And it's something you never have to do again. You learn it. You never have to do it again. So you ready? Apple. I'm going to go at least 73. I'm, I'm, I want to go at least 45, 50 days out. Okay. So here's 38. I'm not interested in 38. 40 or more. 45 or more. There's 73 days. I'm going to call that good for now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for open interest, open interest, and delta. That's the only two things I care about. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about gamma, theta, vega, rohu, togas, or anything. It's all I care about right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to Delta and I want around 70. 
those two numbers right there would work. I want to make sure that there's plenty open interest. That's plenty. By the way, for small accounts, that's plenty as well. But the open interest is, I mean, the delta is wrong, okay? Let's see if I can back out of that. There we go. So the question is, how do I pick the X or the, uh, how do you decide on the strike price? First, I decide on the delta and the open and the open interest. And there is the strike price. Okay. So there's one time. The, ne the next time I do this, I won't do it in double. We'll just pick one. So um, let's see. No one's put a stock. So I'm just going to put, let's put Google in there. Let's put Google. Okay. So there's 73 days. There's 38. I'm not interested in 38. Not enough days. I want, I want 45 or more. Okay. I'm happy with 73. I want open interest. Let me get my little thing out here, right here. I want Delta. So around 70, there's 70. There's the open interest. There's my strike price. Carrie, did I answer your question 100%? Do you completely understand what I'm doing? How about has? I'll do that. Hasbro. Let's look at Hasbro. So, again, I want to go more time than 38. So, look at Hasbro. And let me get my crayon. Um, there's 73 delta, 3,000 on the open interest, my strike price, 52.5. Now, what if I wanted to go longer? What would be wrong with that? What would be wrong with going to July? Not a doggone thing. Okay? Not, not one single thing. There we are, right there. What would be wrong? Whoops. I didn't go here. Let's do that one again. I didn't click the button right. So there's our 72 Delta open interest. There's our, our strike price. Let's come over here to January. What would be wrong going to January? Not one single thing. Nothing. Delta, open interest, strike. Now carry. Open interest not as high. Doesn't matter. It just needs to be as enough. Okay. Um, Nicole, I like I said, here's three hundred. That's enough for small accounts. If you're if you're a high roller, you probably want more open interest. Okay. I, I wouldn't read a lot into this too much. I mean, I have to admit, if I was looking at this, my eyes are going to focus on this right here. And it just so happens it meets my delta, so I'm good to go. But if you, if you wanted, you know, if you wanted to trade um, here, look, I, that would work. That would work. Okay. And that's, we want to be in the money, by the way. You want to be in the money. I, and I, here, here's another thing. I love this. New traders. But look, I can buy uh, Hasbro for 60 cents, 75 cents. Yeah, but you're a new trader. You're just going to, you, you, you will be the reason that Wall Street gets a bad name. It's that simple. All right. Oh, you want to stay in the money. All right, let, let's see here. Carrie, I want to make sure I answered all your questions here. So a shorter term strike is more likely to gamble. Well, th see, the problem, Carrie, is I want time on my side. I want time. And if I, if I buy this and I'm wrong, and for whatever reason, I don't close it, I have time to get out of it or I have, 
I have time for it to maybe come back. All right. Another thing is if you buy out here, maybe not so much with 38 days, but 10 days, you better be a damn good trader. That's all I can say. You, you better be damn good. And you know what? Anybody, look, I'm, I don't mean to hurt anyone's feelings right here. I don't. But you're going to find that I'm a straight shooter. If you're somebody with $5,000, you're not a good trader. I'm sorry. You don't fit into that category. If you just started three weeks ago and you have $5,000, you're not a good trader. You've only been at it three weeks. If you started 20 years ago and you only have $5,000, duh, you're not a good trader. Okay? So, you have to pay your dues. And please, don't somebody with a million dollars in your pocket say, well, I'm going to go be a trader and I'm going to go put $300,000 in my account. Please, that doesn't make you a trader. You're still not a trader. All right? So... You don't want this short-term stuff. You want longer term. Longer term. I'm going to move that over for a sec. Answer some questions here. Um, how can you check to make sure you aren't paying too much for the option? I don't know what you mean by paying too much. Because... I, I, I don't I don't I, I don't understand what would be too much. Um, you'll have to you'll have to you, you'll have to expound on that just a little bit. Um, for instance, if I see I see Apple and I want to trade Apple, I'm going to go over here to June. That's where I'm going to start anyway, and it everything works out. You're going to pay you know, in the 14, say 35 for it. If, is that too much? And that's really just your opinion, not that, that is what it is. That's not too much. Okay. So maybe there's something or I'm not picking up on your question. Maybe ask me again in a different way, perhaps. Um, I, Larry, I don't do weekly options, just the monthly options. Yeah, just the monthly. Uh, Nicole, did I answer your question on open interest? Make sure I did that. Is 60 days enough time? Yes, yes. 60 days would be plenty. Kevin took CCL short today. Uh, 21 June, 24, $17 puts with acceptable risk. Stop price, no worries. Thanks, Kevin. So Kevin just shared a trade with everybody that he took today. Um, Rick, the problem I've had when looking for higher open interest is sometimes the volume is very low. Well, stop looking at it, and then you won't have a problem, Kev. I, I'm, look, I'm serious as a heart attack, okay? If, if part of your... Well, here, let's back up. I'm not sure if you mean volume in the chart or volume in the option, maybe. First of all, I only look at quality charts. I don't look at charts with crap volume, okay? So number one, right there. I mean, if you're looking at charts with crap volume, you're going to get crap charts. So don't do that. Now, notice nowhere on here do I have volume. Nowhere. And I'm serious, a heart attack. If that's your problem, take volume off, stop looking at it. But you have to stop looking at crap charts. Okay? I don't care about the volume. Because I only look at quality charts. I don't look at junk charts. The way to do that is that list that I will put out to everybody of, of priced right charts for small accounts. And what I mean by priced right, um, let me, can I do this? Whoops, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Um, let, let me, okay, 
KMI. Take KMI as an example. $18.48. I'm not saying this is going to be on that list. I'm just pointing out a stock that is priced right for low for small accounts. Small accounts cannot trade Tesla. You cannot trade Apple. You cannot trade Google. I'll, I'll show you why here in a sec. Be well, you only have so much money you can put into a position. And those charts, they are going to command a price that you cannot afford. So why even mess with them until you grow your account? When you grow your account, now you can move into those type of charts. Okay. So here, here's a chart here, KMI. It trades 8 million shares today. I don't look at junk charts and this is priced right. Okay. And you know, and I can't say whether the option is going to be, well, we can go look at it, I guess. Let me do this. KMI. Not every stock I look at, can you trade options with? Let's start with 73. Um, there's, wow. See here, there's, there's not even a 70 Delta, so I can't trade this. I'm going to run over here to September. No, no Delta. January, no Delta. For fun, let's go backwards. One, still nothing. So, so no matter whether I, I, this might be my favorite chart of all time. I could not trade this. So not every trade or not every chart can be traded with options. Every single chart I look at can be traded with stock. All right. So here's one I would have to pass up because they're just simply the deltas in the wrong place. There's no delta that I would want. And the, and, and really, the, and right there is the only two open interest areas that I want, and I don't want a hundred percent Delta. Okay. All righty. Let's see here. You're very welcome, Carrie. And thank you for the question. Vern, buying higher volume stocks generally means slimmer uh, bid and ask. Yes. Yes. A lot less slippage. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Nicole. Um, a spread too large can mean a uh, bad price. Right, but no one says you have to trade the spread, right? So, so if you look at that, if you look at that spread and you don't like that spread, no one says you have to trade it. So I don't care who buys what. Um, let me do something over here real quick. Oops, I don't want that one flag. Uh, I'm gonna move this out of the way so it's not in the chart. Oh. Here's a chart that I kind of like, Wolf. This is one that I'm looking at to buy. Not necessarily right away. Think patience, patience. Wolf, priced correctly. Let's go look at it. Wolf, oh, my foot went to sleep, damn it. <laughs> so what if now this is this is this is aftermarket, so I'm not, you know, I'm not going to put a lot of weight in how real this is right now. Tomorrow during the day is when I want to look at this. The spread on this is way too much. But let's just say that me, 19 other people buy Wolf, okay? For whatever reason, we buy Wolf. You have to do your own analysis. All right, everybody, grow a pair. Get, get, be, be, grow up. You know, don't just follow blindly. Grow up and be a trader. You look at this and you say, oh, I can't do that spread. Then don't do it. Doesn't matter who else did it. I, you know, I, I, I heard from my mom years ago. Well, if they run off, a, jumped off a bridge, will you jump off a bridge? You know, when I did something stupid, you know, everybody's heard that. So you can't trade that. I don't care. I don't care. Delta is on the money. 
Open interest is right. I like it. That looks like a trade to me, except the spread, which tonight, just because it's after hours, the spread is wide. During tomorrow, I'll bet that spread's not like that. I'll bet you a hundred bucks it's not like that. Okay? So, anyway, that, that's exactly how I would look. And again, priced right. Oh, yeah, here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, priced right. Let's see if I can do this. So, let's buy this right here. And preview. Um, preview. Try this again. Um, can I get that off there? Really? Yes. Let's see if we can do this. Try this again. I've never done this. All right. What I'm going to have to do here, let me just take the account number off the account real quick. And let's put this back before I get myself in trouble. All right. And let's do this. So let's come over here. Let me get rid of this. Uh, let's buy this right here. I'm going to preview it. This is what it's going to cost me to buy one contract. So at $5,000, can I afford to buy two contracts? Not really. We're, we're maybe, you know, I mean, how much do you want to fudge? That's, that's the question. And I'm talking about me personally trading, okay? Me personally. So right there, that's going to be the cost. And if I did this twice, I guess it would, if I did this quantity twice and just do it again, preview, there it is right there, $1,380. That is more than I want to spend on a position with a $5,000 account. Now, this account has $5,600 in it, but this is more than I want to spend on a position if I'm just starting out. I've been trading for 36 years, and I'm still not going to buy two contracts, all right? Still not going to do it because I have, I have some pretty set rules on the whole double your money thing in 12 months. That's why I'm able to make it work. All right, let's see. Thanks, Ed. Ed posted a link there for those that are interested in $25 first month membership. Um, Hasbro has earnings coming up. Yes, speaking of earnings, I, I despise earnings. I would rather not trade through earnings. Uh, just a personal thing. So what is the reason behind not having a 70 Delta? Um, you, there is more chance of making money up here when you're in the money. If the stock moves a buck, you're going to make 70 cents. I mean, if you wanted a, if you wanted an 80 Delta, uh, something like that, you could certainly do that can make 80, uh, 80 cents. If it moves up a buck, you hear a lot of hype, people buying out of the money. So what's the reason behind a 70 Delta? Um, you know, it's not so much 70 Delta as much as it is in the money. If you buy out of the money, you better be a damn good trader because if this thing goes wrong on you, goes against you, it goes against you fast and it goes against you hard and it's painful. And, and if you have the, if you're a good trader and you have a good track, track record, knock yourself de dead down here, knock yourself dead. I, I mean, look, people that buy down here, you can make those 100% moves. You can. But those people aren't telling you they're losers, are they? It's amazing. Do you ever find it amazing how you hear from the same person and 
they're always talking about their 70, 80, 90, 100% winners. God damn, they never have a losing trade. I want this guy to trade my money. Isn't it funny how that's the only people, you know, you, you, that's all you hear about. That's all you hear about. You never hear about the losers. So they don't tell you where they're doing nothing but sucking wind down here. In the money, your, your, your chances of making money are better. And you, if it moves a dollar, you're going to get 70 cents out of it. Here you'd get 79 cents out of it. Okay. So it, it's not so much 70 as much as it's in the money. You don't want it too much up here out of the money because then it gets too radical, too crazy. I hope that answered your question a little bit. You ought to come in the room, Kev, and see it all operate. Uh, let's see here, Kevin. I'm being patient for another entry on LAC Long. Um, yeah, I would be patient too. And I would be patient till over, over 740 on that one. Uh, let's see, Ricky, there are many benefits to joining the room with Rick. Thank you very much. Uh, I became profitable when I started observing, uh, what patterns others are trading and understanding the days, uh, when they are not trading at all. That is an important one right there. Uh, come with an open mind, give it a try. Uh, thanks Rick. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll get you those tickets to the 50 yard line. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Uh, T, do you think Tradehawk is good for small accounts? Um, I do. Uh, but, but T, I also want to share with you, probably any platform is good for small accounts, okay? I'm not here trying to plug Tradehawk. I use Tradehawk. But you know what? I, I you know, I, any quality um, trading platform would probably be okay. All right. I, uh, in your wolf example for a $5,000 account, would you do an options spread? No, I don't do spreads carry. All I do is, uh, directional trades. That's all. That's all I do. Directional puts and calls or longs and shorts. That's all I trade. Um, Vern, Everybody, you need to copy those stocks down that Vern put out. Thank you very much, stock. Uh, thank you very much, Vern. Sorry. Um, those are all good good names. Yeah, everybody should copy those down. Thank you, Vern. Um, Ames, I don't know what chart you're looking at. All right. So what time is it? Oh, we still have a few minutes. Let me put this to bed. If anyone has any charts you want to look at, please let me know. We do have a few minutes. I'm not going to run out of here. Um, and uh, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll look for some charts. I was going to, there's Wolf. Let's look at a couple of these. Take a look at Next. Next. You know, let's talk about Next. And I want to talk about patience. So I look at Next and there, there may be people that bought it at the high today, which because it closed there, well, clearly they did. You see, I, I don't think that's a smart move. Now, what if next moves up? You know what? I'm glad people got in it. But the reality is there is probably more of a chance of this thing opening up in this area than there is opening up high, or if it opens up high, it might pull back. All right. So I look at this chart next in EXT. I love it. That's a beautiful chart, but it doesn't mean it's a buy right now. So let's talk patience and wait for the setup. And what setup are we waiting for? I'll tell you the setup that I think is, is, the best setup in the world. Uh, somebody up there said, find a setup and just trade it and quit wandering. And it's simply 
a rise and a pullback. There's our rise. Wait for the pullback and then wait for the buyers to step in. And there you go. Stop. We didn't talk about profiting too much. You know, I, I trade a lot with, with uh, the amount of money I make, not trying to capture a top. On a $5,000 account, do you know that you only have to net, net about $26 a day and you'll double it at the end of the year? Did you know that? That's a shocker. Now think about that. So at $26 a day, which means about $125, $130 a week, okay? I'm not saying you have to close a position out every day. That's not what I'm saying. But if you averaged, averaged out $25, $26 a day or about $125, $130 a week, do you know that you'll double your money in 12 months? That's insane. Think about that. That's all you have to make. So, if I'm in a position and it moves up, and then I get, uh, say, say, uh, 100 bucks, all right? I've got a $100 profit. I, I will then close that, put that $50 in my pocket, Again, 125, 130 bucks a week net, you double your money, turn a $5,000 account into a $10,000 account. That's insane. That's crazy. But you know what'll happen? You'll lose patience. I know this. I know this. I know this. I know this. And I'm begging you, don't lose patience. Don't lose the dedication. You'll see that chart and it'll look good. All of a sudden, you'll see something on Facebook with, with, with Buffett's face on it that somebody says, oh, this stock is going to the moon. Now, I want to ask you, do you think Buffett's going to post squat on Facebook? Come on. So what do you do? You stay in it only to get butchered. Absolutely butchered. And the minute you hear something on CNBC, that's the time to start closing it. So that's the time to start thinking about profits. All right? So just, anyway. But we, we don't have time to go into the whole profit thing there. Anyway, let's see. What, what are we doing here? Um, Carrie, what's the magic with ATR? I personally do not know. I do not. It's average true range. I do not use average true range. Uh, some people do. There's nothing, nothing wrong with using it. Um, you know, every trader has got to put together their own basket of knitting. Put together your own basket of knitting, and that's not my knitting right there. Uh, e t e t e t e t r n e t r n. I uh, bought long today, John. What a gorgeous chart. Write this number down, everybody. Trades out 8 million shares, beautiful, $13 stock. You've got a J-hook continuation pattern. Is it too late? Have patience. Have patience. Here we have the, broke, the breakout broke out. <laughs> what do we want? We want this thing to show continuation. Does anybody in their right mind think that this thing is just going to just automatically just go up on its own all by itself one day after another? Why would anybody think that? Maybe because of that right there. <laughs> but seriously, that, that doesn't happen. So what do you think the chances are? <coughs> Excuse me again. What do you think the chances are We'll, here we'll give it we'll give it another update. What do you think the chances are of a little pullback? I'm thinking pretty darn good. Now, based on that, I'm going to go ahead and put the bullish candle in here. I don't know if it's going to happen on this day, but look what we have here. 
Uh, let's make this blue, 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 and an arrow. There we go. See how we rallied up and pulled back right here? And then we got bullish, right? See the rally? See the pullback? See how we got bullish? It's the same thing over and over and over and over again. Go look at this chart. We rally, we pull back, we got bullish. Rally, pull back, got bullish. Rally, pull back, got bullish. Okay? How tough is that? Lesson. There's a lesson right there. How hard is that? Well, I'll tell you, it's the hardest thing in the world. Because this market stinks right now. Right now. And I, for me, uh, for me, doesn't mean that, that, uh, well, who, uh, John bought ETRN. John, John has his own basket of knitting and that's okay. My basket of knitting says to back off the market. So everybody's got to have their own little basket of knitting. Okay. So there we go. Um, So where are we here? Uh, let's look at the diamonds real quick. Look at the diamonds. What is bullish about the diamonds? Anything? I, I hope everyone says nothing. Um, having this tail down here is not bullish. Look at the cues. What's bullish about the cues? Nothing. What is sideways about the cues? Everything. <laughs> the whole market is just sideways choppy right now. All right, junk, yeah, uh, crappy, exactly. We got IWM. What is good about IWM? Nothing. But there's nothing bad about it either. And that's true with the rest of the market. Take the SPY. What's good about it? Nothing. What's bad about it? Nothing. It's just sideways. It's choppy. That's all it is. Okay? And there you go. Lesson. You've learned that. So what would make this bullish? How about we break out? How about we just wait till we break out? Why does anyone have to trade here? Those with $5,000 accounts, small accounts, this is what will kill you trying to trade. Have patience. Step aside. Wait for the market to be yours. So let's talk about that whole shorting business, okay? So let's, uh, let's assume the market does this. That is not a pretty chart right there. I have to tell you that, um, that, that, that is short, 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 short. We get below the 50 period moving average. That is nasty, uh, up maybe. And then, uh, okay. So if you have a small account, you're still learning how to trade, step away, step away. Dedicate yourself to saying, I'll wait for a better market. Bearish is not a better market for you. I know you're going to think it is. And I know that there's going to be people out there that's making money hands over fist. I know this. But as a new trader, as a rookie trader, as somebody that's struggling, stop the insanity. Just stop it. Wait till there's a better market. A better market is when we turn up, when we turn up, that's a better market for you for right now. That's a better market. When you get some time under your belt, when you have some successes with long trades, you can dabble in the short trade business. But anybody who thinks a short trade is just as easy to trade as a long trade, you're wrong. And go on, you'll prove it to yourself. Just don't be one of the 90% that blames everybody else. Okay? Suck it up. Suck it up. Write a letter to Santa. Dear Santa, I screwed up. All right? Okay, let's get going here. Uh, if uh, bid and ask too wide, just buy some shares. Yeah, buy some shares and uh, you don't have to buy the options. Uh, you're right. If the bid, bid and ask is too wide, 
maybe don't trade that stock. Move on. Um, that would rip your face off if you... Oh, I know. That, that would be something, wouldn't it? Um, let's see. Uh, Ed pointed out a little earlier that... Um, um, I think it's Boeing. Delta has earnings too. I think Boeing has earnings. Yeah, Delta has earnings tomorrow. Boeing has earnings. Um, did, did anybody hear the news on Boeing? Something about a whistleblower? I may be talking. I may, I may better be quiet about that. I may be talking about something. I don't know what I'm talking about. Poor Boeing. Anyway, all right. Anyone have any last minute questions? Any anything you I got a chart you want to look at? I've got exactly eight minutes. Yeah, I okay. I, I, I did hear it right then, Richard. Yeah. Poor boy. I don't know if these stock oh here, I could do it this way. Take a look at take a look at FMC here. This should be a chart on our watch list. FMC. Have patience. You don't have to buy it right now. Let's take a look at the weekly on this. Look at that weekly. Man, we start to climb over that 65, 20 area. Ooh, doggy, that might be a nice trade. Have patience. Learn to trade the charts. And this is what I'll be more than happy to teach you in the trading room. Plant. What am I doing wrong? P-L-N-T. There we go. Plant. That's a nice chart. Uh, almost 2 million shares traded. That's a great looking chart. Look at the inverted head and shoulders. You know, there's only a handful of chart patterns you need to know. When I say a handful, I'm talking 10, 10 maybe. 10, maybe, maybe 10. And I'm talking both long and short, okay? Inverted head and shoulders. How sweet is this? How hard is it to draw a trend line? How tough is that? Connect this dot with that dot. There's a lesson, okay? There's a lesson. Now, I don't use trend lines like that. I use moving averages. How hard is it to see, hey, we're over the 50 period moving average? How tough is it to have patience? I don't have to buy it right away. Because if you look at this chart, before you think about the chart as a buy, go look and see what it can do for you. And all you need to do is go to highs and lows. That's all. Highs, it matches up with those lows, so I'm okay with that. Look at this. Just go to that next high. If you feel strongly, you can put a line up there at that high. Those are targets, by the way. Nothing says you have to buy it right now. Nothing. Have patience. What if we put a box around here? This is what I call the buy box. And what if we waited patiently till it pulled back and did something like this? Remember, buy. Now, watch this. Remember the chart pattern that we looked at earlier? Rise, pull back, buy. Just like that. Look at this. Rise, pull back, buy. Or bullish candle. Not necessarily buy. What if we waited till it broke out? So let's do this. Let's go here. What if we waited to a breakout? Now that's only 3.7%, right? But who says you have to sell it? Unless there's a sell signal, why sell it? Go to the next one. There's, we'll call it 8.9%. All right? Have patience. What if the market itself, what if the market, what if you're long this? Uh, let's do this. What if you're, what if you're long this and you're, you're in it, you've got profit up to here. Uh, let's do this. Profit up to here. Okay. Now, what if the market, when I speak of the market, I usually speak of the SPY. Whenever I say market, I, it's always referring to the SPY. 
So what if the spy does this? Would you stay long this? Come on, let's have some common sense. The answer would be no. Get out of it as fast as you can. Take your money and run. It, there's, just, there's just a handful of little, really common sense things that you have to do in trading. That's all. And, and, and I'm not going to lie to you. They're not easy, okay? Because, because greed will overrun your common sense. Lack of patience will drive you nuts. It, it'll make you crazy. Okay? So anyway. All right. Okay, it is getting late, folks. I better get out of here. Ed just put up that link again. Anyone interested in uh, your first month, $24.50. I'll see you in the room tomorrow morning. If you have any problem at all, uh, you can email me personally, rick at ricksadler.com. Outside of that, you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thanks for all the kind words uh, that were said in here. Thank you very much. I hope this was a little helpful. And again, if I can answer some of your questions, just let me know, okay? You guys have a great evening. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow morning, okay, everyone? Take care.